Hi everyone, Brett McGee Quilts here, and I'm standing in front of my intertidal invertebrates quilt, which is in the Pacific Northwest and focuses on the ecosystems there. Now, I've made a jacket focusing on another ecosystem that's right next door to this one, intertwined with it, and it's the kelp forests. And I've made this jacket, let me put it on for you. completely by hand with hand applique kelp, hand dyed background, and it's all hand quilted. And I'd like to show you the process of how I made this jacket. Now, let me do a Mr. Rogers, take the jacket off, and show you the first steps. So the first step of making any garment is you need a pattern. And the way I decided to do it, I'm not gonna go into how I did it because it really took a long time and there's all kinds of videos about how to make a pattern of your own body. But I started by making what's called a basic sloper. And a sloper is your basic sort of back, bodice piece and your front bodice piece with this armhole in the middle that is kind of a basic idea of uh, what a garment could be and then you go from there adjusting it a bigger armhole a smaller armhole more room in the chest more room in the back so this is my basic sloper and i decided my jacket was kind of just going to be my basic sloper um just expanded to be a little bigger to be jacket size. And of course, along with that, you also make a sleeve. So with these two pattern pieces, I'm ready to move forward to make my garment. Now, normally when you put together a garment, these pieces are separate. You know, you have your, perhaps you have your back piece and then you would double it. And so then you'd have your full back piece all as one. And then you have your front piece, which would be in two sections because it's a jacket, it has to open down the middle. So you see like this. I thought, wouldn't it be clever if, since I'm gonna be hand quilting the whole thing, it would be easier if I had less pieces to seam together in the end when I constructed it. So I decided I would just double this and make the bodice piece all one, like it was a whole cloth quilt. So, show you what I came up with here. Something, I hope you can see the whole thing on the camera. Something like this. And by doing this, I'm able to create my design of the jacket. I knew I wanted these tendrilic help forms. And so by using this pattern, I'm able to put the pieces together to know exactly where all my applique was going to go, front and back, and essentially design the quilts before I actually went in to dye any fabric. I did the same thing with the basic sleeve. And I only had to draw one of these because the other sleeve just remained white, just a regular sleeve, so that the, uh, the jacket would be uh, asymmetrical, which was something I really, really wanted from it. So to get to this point when I made this drawn pattern, I used Procreate to design my image first. So here I am in Procreate using the time-lapse feature to show how I quickly draw in the shapes of the pattern so I can start painting and uh, figuring out where all my uh, imagery is going to go, where the lights and the darks are, the basic shape of the kelp tendrils. And Procreate is so great because, you know, on paper, even with a pencil, you've got to erase it. But in Procreate, you can, you can really play around. You can put things on different layers and then begin to really refine it. So here I'm 
really doing the specific, actual, what I'm really going to draw onto my uh, paper template in real life that will then be transferred onto fabric. So this is like a really good chance to audition the whole thing and give myself a, a pretty good idea of where I'm going. And then I'm able to, as you see here, scramble up the pieces, reassemble them to see what the garment's actually going to look like when it all comes together. It's a very powerful tool and something that's just not as efficient to do on paper. Here I was playing around with adding, you know, maybe a school of fish swimming through. And as you'll see here coming up, I decided, no, I don't think so. I'll just quilt in there. And then I'm trying to figure out, well, what is the quilting pattern going to be? And this is what's so great about Procreate, as you can see here, I can audition my quilting pattern. And I just decided to do echo quilting. And here it is when it's all transferred to the paper. I've gone over in marker what the kelp is, but you can see in the pencil is how I marked in all of that echo quilting that's going to happen once I get to the quilting stage of this piece. Transferring it to paper really was just a matter of freehand drawing based on what I saw on my iPad. There's no magic trick to it. It's just uh, good old fashioned elbow grease. Now at this point, I'd love to tell you that I sat there and filmed myself dyeing all the fabric and the process, but sometimes you just get to work and you can't think about the filming of it. So I did not manage to capture really much imagery at all of the dyeing process, but let me tell you what I did. First, I did the backdrop, uh, the background, you know, it was just basic pattern pieces. I laid all that fabric out. I drew in permanent marker the shapes of, uh, I transferred those shapes onto the fabric and then using a paintbrush with Procyon MX dyes, I mixed my color perfectly and I applied the lights to the darks onto that fabric, let it sit for a couple of days because you need to with Procyon and uh, rinsed it out until, you know, and then it was ready to go. I repeated that process with the applique. That applique is all done as one piece of fabric. There's no seams in those kelp leaves. Uh, they were all dyed onto one sheet of fabric and then, as you'll see in some images coming up, then applied to the background and cut out as I applique. And here's that applique pattern basted down onto my background. And if you look at the bottom left there, you can see where I started the applique, uh, just bit by bit, cutting away the excess fabric and turning those edges under with a needle. Right next to it there, you in the left, you see that pocket that I added. And I had to applique around that because eventually I'm gonna cut that hole out and make a double welted pocket where that goes. So a lot of pre-planning went into this. And I'd say about 40 hours of work of hand turn, uh, needle turn applique went into this design. I'm very proud of it. It was a lot of work. Um, and even though it was tedious, the result is worth it. And in this final picture, you can see I've actually added the backing and the batting and basted it so it's ready to be hand quilted. Now here I'm using my hoopless hand quilting technique. I'm using a wool batting because it's really the easiest to quilt through. It's a Hobbs Tuscany wool batting. And I've got my leather thimble on my right thumb and a cheap thimble on my index finger. And I just take stitches one by one uh, in a very simple, what I think is a simple quilting process compared to hoops and frames. Uh, and it was just hours and hours of this hand quilting, really. For me, I find it relaxing and meditative. Uh, but the result is great. If you look up there in the right, you can see all that echo quilting.
And here's how one of the sleeves turned out with the echo quilting in between the applique. I really like all the texture and the effect. The back is beautiful too, or in this case, the inside of the coat. After all the quilting was completed, it was time to install the double welted pocket. Here you can see I've got an extra piece of fabric rectangle that I'm pinning exactly where that pocket that I drew in. And now I'm back stitching that down because in the next step, I'm gonna be cutting away where you see that line down the middle and then folding or, or rather pushing all that fabric through of that rectangle through to the back, almost like when you're doing a binding. So back stitching all the way around this. Now just using my rotary cutter to get a bit of a, a start on the cut. And I'm keeping those the cuts inside of the line that I just stitched because that's what's gonna hold the edges of the pocket together. And then they get turned to the back. Now you can see I could just leave it like that, but since this is gonna be a double welted pocket, some of that fabric on the inside you see there will be folded in to, you know, close off that pocket and make kind of a sort of a, a slit. Pinning that in place. Doing the same to the top. So that I can then turn those edges under and use my good old needle turn applique stitch to flat fell the edges of those pockets to from the inside. Now this is a detail no one's going to see once the actual pocket facing is put on there, the thing that actually makes the pocket. But it, it is nice to have these, knowing these sort of detail, couture, if you will, details are on the inside. And these stitches you see that I'm doing here, this is the exact same stitches I used on the kelp. So there we go, I went around, cleaned all of that up, flat felled it. And once you turn around, there it is. My double welted pocket. Now I'm adding the pocket facing, which in this case is just a piece of fabric that I'm going to, again, applique stitch down all the way around. And then my hand will fit in. Once that's down, I do go around the entire garment and turn all of the edges in. This is making my hems and finishing. I, I basically cut away all the fabric that isn't the front. And then I turn that front to the back and then turn it under, as you see here, to make those beautiful, nice edges. So that from the front, all you see is the design. You don't see any top stitching to finish off. And there it is, all quilted and the edges finished, including the neckline. You can see all those beautifully finished, flat felled seams. Now for the sleeves. Okay, so first step one, I decided I was gonna do a French seam. And a French seam is a kind of seam that both secures your seam, but then also finishes it at the same time. It's a two-step process. So first I pinned my edges together of the sleeve and I'm stitching, I've got the wrong sides together in this case. That's the first step of doing a French seam, and I'm stitching a quarter of an inch from the edge of where I want my actual seam to be, and then cut away the extra. Then, when I've now turned it inside out, I'm going to be stitching on the line where I actually want the seam to be, 
And then when it gets turned back right side out, you have a fully enclosed seam with no raw edges. So I did that in lieu of flat felling the sleeve, the sleeve seams. And I thought, well, why not? I'll just try it out and see. It was more of an experiment than a, you know, something I always have to do. Now, so there I've turned it back and <laughs> I didn't actually like how the seam turned out. So I, you can't quite see it on camera there, but I am ripping out that entire um, second half of that French seam because what happened was none of my seaweed points lined up and my uh, quilting that I spent so long designing so it would all line up over the seams, it didn't line up. So I've now resorted to using a needle and thread to hand baste that seam together before I sew it on the machine. And here I am having a hard time threading the needle because when things start to go wrong, everything starts to go wrong. I'm sure we've all been there. Okay, we've got it threaded. So what I'm gonna do here is go point by point, gathering together with this uh, needle and thread to be sure everything lines up. It's tedious, but in the end, it's the best way to do it. And it's now how I've done subsequent garments. The extra time it takes is worth it. And as you'll see here in a moment, it's also going to be worth it for inserting the sleeve and the sleeves, sleeve insertions are notoriously difficult to do, particularly when you're doing it as a circle, you know, where the sleeve is already put together and the bodice, the shoulder, you know, the side seams of, are already put together on your bodice as well. So just matching up point for point meticulously. There we go, all sewn. I didn't show you the second round of sewing, but it worked out beautifully this time around. As you can see, all that quilting lines up, the applique lines up, just as I had designed on my paper pattern. So satisfying. And then when we look inside, there it is, that beautifully finished French seam. All right, now, moving on to inserting the sleeves. Cutting out all that extra fabric, I'm using the same process with my needle and thread. I learned my lesson to base together these shoulder seams because they have points that need to line up as well perfectly before I go to the machine and sew it. Now I'm not doing a French seam on these. I'm gonna flat fell them. So I just need to do one right sides together seam. So here I'm basting the right sides together And then I went to my machine, did both of the shoulders, and there it is. I've got a fully formed bodice ready for sleeve insertions. You can see my pockets there as well, all ready to go. Okay, so same process. And this makes it so much easier to sew that sleeve once you go to your machine when you've taken the time to do it like this. Now, one thing special about this sleeve insertion is that I didn't have any, I didn't leave any room for easing. It is literally the same measurement, the, the circumference of the sleeve and the circumference of the, the sleeve opening, which 
uh, you know, isn't best practice necessarily, but it fits like a glove beautifully. And, uh, you know, I can do what I want. It's my own uh, project. So I do one half of the sleeve insertion. And then flip it around and go from that same starting point as before and go from the other side. And that's because you have this place, you know, you have where all the seams meet up. And when you're working with a quilted garment, each layer of fabric is really three. It's the front, the backing, and the batting. And so you're, you've are you got six layers of fabric meeting all at once in some of these seams. And so it's just easier to do it in two different go rounds and you just finagle that fabric as you go around and make sure everything is where it needs to be, work slowly. I've got it sped up here, but really this was quite a slow sewing process. All right, now, now it's time to finish off the inside sleeves on the shoulders and the arms. So I'm cutting away the extra batting and also in this case the front fabric so i'm just leaving that backing fabric and i'm taking my time here to make sure i don't cut anything i don't want to cut And again, where all these points meet, you've just got this kind of cluster of fabric and batting. And it's a big part of this is deciding what you want to do with it. Now, I'm not going to go into every detail of how I decide that. But if you ever make a garment like this, you'll see exactly what I mean when you get to that point. You're just going to have to decide what you're going to turn into your flat felled seam material. So here I'm doing the armhole in the same way, cutting away the extra fabric. And I'm just gonna leave behind one layer of the backing that I will turn under and flat fell with my applique stitch. So, and that's this process going on right here. You're watching it in fast motion, but it does take a good amount of time to go through and do this, all of this finishing work, and it's all done by hand. Um, unless you want stitching coming through to the front, you have to do it by hand because when you do it by hand, you can capture just the back layer of your quilt sandwich with your needle, magically hiding those seams inside so that you don't see the finishing stitches to the front. Now, if you wanted, um, you know, top stitching to show through to the front, that would be up to you. All right, so let me Mr. Rogers this again. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of how I made this jacket. Maybe it's not every detail, but I think it's enough to give you an idea of the process that goes into making a garment like this. I've got more in the works of this garment, of this type, of this style of garment. So look out for more videos. Here it is with the zipper coming together. Uh, a couple little details. Everything matches up over the seams, including the quilting. Also under the arm, it matches up. And of course, across the back. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Like and subscribe. And per my usual tradition, I'm gonna take this jacket upstairs to my piano 
and play a little piece of music that I've composed especially for the occasion. Thanks for watching.